All right, welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 28. And today we're going to walk through some of the new items from the latest build, which was, uh, don't remember the date on that. So the 24th, August 24th. Hey, Johnny, if you can you just go to that, go through that list really quickly, just, just to show there's a, there's a ton of stuff on this um, this release, yep. and we're really just going through a select portion of it. A lot of the stuff there, you know, f you know, fixes, um, and then some of the things are just so small that you know it's kind of not even worth demonstrating. So we're just going to show you know the ones that we feel, you know, you'll probably uh, find a use for, you know, more immediately than you would some of these other ones. Right. So anything that we've like stated corrected issue, we're, we're not covering. It's just an item that was fixed. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to, do you want to share your screen? I'm not uh, sure. Yeah. It looks like I can't. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, no. Let me, uh, just because you were sharing yours. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can see your screen. My screen. Okay. So, uh, and and really everything we're going over is in uh, App Builder. So I'm just gonna start this up, and we created a few uh, simple applications to demonstrate this. So the first one um, are we there's some changes in the uh, grid check checkbox. Yeah. So I'm just going to go into the app here and go to settings here. So we're talking about the, you know, the, the, the checkbox row selections. Um, you know, we've always had everything you see here. What's new is this condition <clears throat> uh, because, you know, there are oftentimes um, you may want uh, to exclude <clears throat> a particular row from being selected for any reason. So I'm just going to click on hold on real quick. Someone just stated they can't see your screen. Oh, I can see <clears> your <throat> screen. Is anyone else that's on not seeing Sean's screen or at least somebody seeing it? Yeah, people can see it. I can see it, too. Laura, I'm not sure. You Maybe might the, have the Zoom screen might have gone to the back. <clears throat> something because others are seeing it and I can see it. And. Okay, shit. <clears throat> Laura's gonna try again because yeah, I, I can see it. So let's just and others see it too. So I'm guessing, Laura, that maybe that the Zoom window maybe is in a different, you know, it's behind the current window you're looking at, maybe. So yeah. Okay, and we'll have it recorded too. So yeah. All right. Well, Sean, you just continue on. All right. So um our checkbox row selections, the new feature here is the ability to add a condition. Um, so let me just, let me just launch the application and then we'll explain what's happening here. So notice if my state is Illinois, you know, I have this available, whereas states that are not in Illinois, it's disabled. And if I go back here, we'll see that C state equals Illinois. So that means to allow it to be selected. So that is a new feature. And I'm also going to go into the link to app variables here for this grid, because I also added checkbox selection. So I, I, I created an app variable. I named it enable checkboxes. And if I set this to false, true or false, I could toggle whether or not all of those checkboxes are enabled or disabled. So let me just show you what I did here. I just created an app variable. I called it enable checkboxes. And then if I go, let me go to my application here. Notice I have this disable checkboxes and enable. So now, you know, we just have our select ones, Illinois that are enabled. I'm just gonna click disable. And now everything is disabled. Now I can enable it back, and it's just going to enable back the, uh, you know, the ones that should be enabled. 
And if I go into App Builder, let's just see what that button is doing. And all it's doing is just a set app variable. When I click disable, I'm setting false to that enable checkboxes. And then when I select enable, same app variable, I'm sending it to true. Okay, so that is, those are the changes for the checkboxes. Uh, the next one I'm going to go into is we have some conditional editing in our uh, edit grid now. So let me just go into this uh, edit grid. So the difference now is you'll see in this editing, um, we've got this new little column here where you could enter some code so i have this you know i have all of these um for editing i'm including all of them i have this one set to read only so it's always read only there's there's no there's no reason to have a condition but if i do not have it to read only it's giving me the option to conditionally make it read only so let's just see i have something for zip code so for zip code i said if 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 the city is not equal to blank and the state is not equal to blank, then yeah, you know, allow them to edit the field. Okay. But if, if those are blank, then we're not going to allow zip code to be edited. Okay. So let's just, let me close this one. Let me launch the other one. BB28, conditional editing. So, uh, I'm going to go into this one. We have a city and, and we have a state here. I'm just going to double click and, you know, I can edit the zip code. But this one up top does not have a city and state. And I cannot edit the zip code. Okay. So it's just a way to put conditional um, read only on, on any of those fields in your form. And that's also available for the ad, right? If yes. You it. Yep. So notice, notice as I select these, then you get this option available. But if I were to say it's read only, then we don't bother just like with the editing because you're never gonna allow it to be edited if you say make it read only all the time. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so the next thing uh, I wanna go over, I'm just gonna close this, are features and app variables. So um, let me go into, so I just have a, uh, you know, a, a grid here with a couple buttons. Um, I put an icon column on it. Let's just see what we did here. Okay. So I've got a grid with two buttons and an icon column, and I set a feature name to one of the buttons and to this icon column. So now, as soon as you have any features, we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here, I'm gonna go into app variables. We create this automatically, this nab feature. So remember, I, I called, sorry, I'm not doing a good job here. Let me go back here. I called this additional stuff, okay? And I gave this the same name. So we're going to automatically create a feature or I mean an app variable called nab feature additional stuff. Okay. So this just gives you a way for the front end to um, turn features on and off because previous before this, um, the way you disable the feature or enable the feature it was only done through a backend program. So now you can do it on the front end. So I created a button, disable additional stuff, on click, set app variable, nab feature additional stuff. So this is the one that was automatically created for me. So we, we make these orange to kind of stand out that these are features. And I set it to false. And when I enable additional stuff, I'm setting it to true. So let's just see that, see how it works. 
So right now I'm seeing my button and my icon column. I'm going to disable it so they go away, and then I'm going to enable it. Okay. So just a way on the front end to enable and disable features. Close this. And let me get out of here. And we're just going to go over a couple uh, form changes. So let me just go into this form. And what is new here is that I can set colors on a field that is editable. So previously, if I had a field editable, this colors would be, you know, you just kind of see a slash through it, like you, you couldn't do anything with colors. So in this case, um, name, let me just click on colors. I don't have any rules. I'm just saying always make, um, make it this blue, okay? And then for state, I added a color. And in this case, I, I, I put a rule. I said, if, if the state is Illinois, um, then you know, make it red. Okay. So let's just take a look at our, um, our form here. And you'll see that this is blue and this is not red right now, which I'm not sure why, but I, I know when I run the app, it, oh, there we go. We might just have a little rendering issue, but you'll see as it's, um, when it's Illinois, it's red, okay. So let me uh, let me start this app because there's one other change. So the other change um, was if you have a backend program that is doing some sort of validation and you put any of these form fields in here, if you have any buttons that are that 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 you stated to disable if the form is in error, it'll automatically disable them. Before it was only a front end feature, so now we have the back end causing this thing to, to, to happen as well. Let me just show you how that's set up. Let me go into um, this application, and I'm going to go into behaviors, and I'm just going to look at this save button. Disable when form is in here. Okay. And then where is this one? I did not put that. So I have a back end uh, form helper program that really is just as soon as I tab off here, it's going to set this into air. Uh, let me change something. Okay, <laughs> maybe not. Let me see, did I not attach my form helper program here? Give me one second. Yeah, I did. Okay. Let me just look at my developer tools here. And let me look at my program, sorry. Oh, you guys probably don't see that screen. I'm not sharing everything. I'm just going to the back end quickly just to see this uh, helper program. Oh, so stupid. It's working exactly as I expect. I'm gonna blank my, I'm gonna blank out my city. Okay, so now this became disabled. And if I put something here and go back, now it re-enabled it. So that's all happening from the back end. That didn't happen before. We should have had that, but it, we didn't. But the there was no change to the back end. It's still, like, it's still the same of like setting a field in error, right? There's exactly. No, we've always had that. It's just we didn't like disable the, the, the button if it was said. That was bound to say, right. yeah, okay. disable it in error. So those are the changes. It's the only form changes. So yeah, I guess this was a quick one. Um, but I think really- You can also um, show 
if you go to and this is on the charts too this is a small oh, yeah. it was required um if you go back to data source there's a data source of dd28 a tag and that if you just want to create a, <clears throat> a like a, a chart off of a column or a bar or something like that yep maybe limit results to 10 just to get some of that out and then yeah the ui of if you scroll down padding before we just had padding it was just it was all it was just like that all like under padding it, that's what it used to be and if you have that set that'll be set just like just like normal but now you can define like specifically if you want padding on the left top right or bottom um and this could be helpful too if you have a like sometimes you could you possibly just want more real estate so nice All right. Anything else we want to mention? Um, yeah, the one last thing I think we should mention is if we go to let, let's go to one of your apps that you've already created. Okay. Um, maybe uh, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the customer demo, the widget itself, and then filters. And yeah, so like we added a timeout and a mask, the text to be how, what should be displayed if, when it's masked, it's always masked when we call your, your filter, filter helper program. But um, we didn't have an option of like the default timeout is always 30 seconds. And there are some rare scenarios that we found from customers that they needed more than that. So you can adjust the timeout on this and then also set the max text to something specific that would make sense if you needed it. Uh, yeah that's that's i think that's outside of all like you know fixes and stuff i think that's pretty much the meat of uh, the last build all right all right well if anyone has any questions let us know and if not we'll uh end our session and we'll we'll put this on our um youtube channel all right thanks everybody all right thanks everybody bye